Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia, CPA and QuickBooks Consultant. I am currently in QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise 2022 or newer to show you the new bill and purchase order workflow approval system. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to log in as admin and you want to go into the company menu and go into users, set up users and roles and make sure you have at least another user set up in there. This only really works when you have two or more users. So I have my admin role set up and then I have this other user named Hector. Now Hector needs to have enough user permissions to be able to create purchase orders or create bills. For now I have given Hector full access, but even though Hector has full access, there will still be conditions to limit that person from being able to create a purchase order or a bill based on the approval uh, rules that we create. So we're going to talk about that in a second. The other thing I want to add here is there needs to be an Intuit account associated with it. There's no extra cost to having an Intuit account, but you do have to tie it to an email address and to an actual login into QuickBooks because our QuickBooks actually logs information about bill and purchase order approval to the cloud for now. So it needs to go up to the cloud and come back down into the QuickBooks file. So the data is not only sitting in your QuickBooks desktop files, also sitting in Intuit servers. I assume at some point that's so they can add additional functionality, maybe web-based approval systems, app, phone app based approval systems, who knows? For the time being, and the time I'm making this video, it's all contained within the software, but you do need to have that Intuit account associated into, into the, um, in the QuickBooks desktop user in order for this to work. Anyway, the account is set up. There's a user set up. We're good to go. Next thing we're going to do is uh, track those, um, those uh, roles specifically for the purchase order and bill approval system. So we're going to go down to and click on setup approval process inside of the company menu all the way down to setup approval processes. Click on that. And then when you first log into it, it's going to show you that there's no, it won't show you a list of any rules set up because there's nothing. It says, hey, you want to start creating them, start adding them. So I'm going to click here, it says get started, or I can click up here, it says templates. Either one works. And then that will take you into the next screen where you can now create either a purchase order or a bill approval process. So let me start with purchase order. I'm going to click on setup. And then specifically for purchase orders, I'm going to create a a system that if you have a purchase order of a thousand or more, it needs to be approved first. So I'm going to just going to select amount as a condition. I'm going to do greater or equal to and put 1000. Yes, you can have multiple conditions created. You can create up to three conditions, uh, one for amount, one for vendor, and then one for vendor type. So you have all three conditions you can uh, work with. For now, we're just going to be working of this amount. Uh, I'm going to scroll down here. So we can see what the actions look like. So action number one is who approves it for, for now. Only admin is going to be able to approve it, but I can select another user to be able to approve these. And then somebody gets an email address. In this case, admin gets an email address reminding them that, hey, something that's been pending there for seven or more days still needs to be approved. And then if you scroll down, you can change the template of what that email will look like for that reminder. So I'm going to click on save and activate. And go ahead and save this uh, this one rule. Click on OK, and that's it. That's the only rule set up for now. You can create multiple rules and kind of layer them on top of each other. But for now, uh, we just have this one rule. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on Set Up New Approval Process. I'm going to select Bill, and I'm going to do slightly different for Bill. So for Bill, I'm going to uh, pick instead of Amount, I'm going to pick Vendor. And I'm going to say, look, there's a specific vendor that, uh, let's say, Anderson Hardware, that if a purchase order gets created for them, it needs to be approved. So I don't have to add the monetary condition, but I'll do it anyway for fun. Let's say if it's um, greater or equal to 100, so if it's $100 or more for that particular vendor, if it's a bill, it needs to be approved. So we're going to have to remember all that when we're creating the examples. Down here, the same thing. You, you get to pick who approves it and then who gets the email notification and, of course, the template of what that looks like. I'm going to click on Send of Activate, and, and that's it. Uh, save and Activate. So I click on OK. I close out of that, and, and I'm done. I have my user set up, and I have my bill approval system set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and log out, and then I log in as Hector so you can see what that looks like.
So I'm logging back in as the other user here. So I'm logging in as the user Hector, who is going to now have a restriction to be able to create purchase orders that are over a thousand, over five thousand dollars, I believe. So it was. So I'm going to go here to purchase order, create the new purchase order. Select the drop down menu, pick any of the vendors here at random, pick an item or a set of items, and then pick a dollar amount that will get the purchase order to be $5,000 or more. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And now the system will tell me, hey, wait a second, this purchase, purchase order needs approval. You want to send it for approval? And I can say, hey, admin, these are the parts we are missing, right? It's actually optional. You don't, you don't actually have to um, type something in there for some reason is sort of gray in there. I don't know why, but that's how they did it. Now at this point, I can either save it as a draft, which basically doesn't post it anywhere. It's sort of in, in the memory as an unapproved or draft purchase order. And then once I'm ready to convert it into a full purchase order, I just go back into it, click on save, and then go back into this, um, this uh, 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 pop-up window for the approval. And I can say, hey, admin, please approve. So the first note really didn't go anywhere because I didn't go to an approval. But I'm going to put whatever notes I want, click on send for approval, click OK. And then now the purchase order is in pending status. Let me do one more. I'll pick another. Uh, purchase order, another vendor here, pick another item. This time around, I'm going to do um, quantities that are also over $5,000. Click on save. You see it happened again. I'm going to put please approve ASAP and then right, just put whatever comments I want and then click on send for approval. Perfect. I'm going to do one more, save and close. Pick another vendor here at random, pick an item, but this one, I'm going to make it only um, $900 under the 5,000. Click on save and notice it didn't go through an approval uh, process because um, it was under the 5,000. I'll do one more just for fun here. Pick another one here, pick another item, and then we'll make this uh, also over, I mean, over 5,000. Click on save, but this one I'm going to keep it at as a draft. So I'm going to go save draft and then I'm going to close out of it. Now, one of the things that drives me crazy about this feature, at least on the version I'm reviewing as of the date of this video, is I don't get to see a report that lets me know what purchase orders or bills, for that matter, are pending. If I go to reports and I go to purchases and I go to open purchase orders, it will show me all of my purchase orders, but none of the ones that I just created are going to show up in here, with the exception of this $900 one that I just created uh, because this one was instantly approved. So there's no report that shows me pending purchase orders or pending approval purchase orders or draft purchase orders, which drives, drives me crazy. Closest thing to that would be for you to go to a company and click on track and approve transactions. And in theory, you should be able to go in here and see them, but you can't on this report or on this view per se. You just cannot see them. Okay, I'm going to switch out of this and log in as admin again. So we can now see what it looks like on the admin side. As an admin, I will be able to see my pending uh, purchase orders. I just cannot see them as uh, the users. That's something that definitely needs to be improved. I sure hope that they work on that as soon as possible. So I'm logged in back as admin. And remember, an, ad an admin or one of the admins or one of the approvers uh, could be working with multiple employees creating these pending uh, orders. So I'm going to go back into company and then go to track and approve transactions. And then in here, I'm going to see all of the pending purchase orders for all the users. So there could be more than one user uh, creating these things, and then I will be able to see them here. So there's uh, pending, there's rejected, there's approved, and there's all. So those are the ones that I can see. And the draft itself, uh, I can't see it. So that's the other thing I wanted to show you is that you cannot see the draft. So you can only see anything that's been sent for approval. So if the user on the other side 
wants to save the draft, they have to go find that purchase order, remember which is the one that was a draft, and then uh, put it in here. Unfortunately, there's no quick way of um, finding a sort of a draft of a purchase order. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and approve these. I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to click on Actions, and I can either approve or reject. So I'm going to approve this one, and then I just put here Approved by Robert, the boss, okay? And I'm going to click on Approve, and I basically just approve the transaction. Then I'm going to go uh, to the next one here, and I'm actually going to reject it, just so you can see and say, um, we are no longer working with this vendor and then click on reject so now uh, i'm going to click on refresh so we can see exactly what's happening here we have that pending purchase order still here um refresh nothing else is showing up in here if i click reject it this one is showing here under rejected and then the other one here showing under approved so basically culminates uh, the process. So the one that is approved, if I go in and open it, you're gonna see where it says approval status approved. Again, there's no specific uh, filter or report that can show that. You actually have to open the transaction and view what that status approval is. Here on the right-hand side, there's also a little uh, tab here that opens up approval, and you can see the history of the, of the notes, you know, for what reason it was approved or not approved. If I close on that and I open up the rejected purchase order, the purchase order is still inside QuickBooks. It's in the QuickBooks database. It just doesn't show up in reports because it's under this not approval, approved status. So there is approval rejected. And then if you go up here and to the right, I see my notes, okay? Uh, that works pretty, pretty well. Now I'm gonna log out of this and then I'm gonna go back into uh, QuickBooks back as the other user. So we can see the dynamic with the bill. It works pretty much the exact same way, but we're gonna show that anyway. So we can see, so let me log in back as the other user. Put here Hector and then log in. All right, let's go ahead and create a bill. I'm gonna to go to the bill button here on the home screen, and I'm gonna pick any vendor that's not Anderson. If you remember, Anderson was the only one we created the, the special rule for. So I'm gonna click this auto associates here, and then I'm gonna pick, uh, let's say an item here, and I'm gonna pick any dollar amount, it really doesn't matter, because this is not part of the workflow. And I'm gonna click on save, and it should let me save the bill. No problem, no restrictions, it worked just fine, okay? Because this wasn't part of the, uh, the workflow. I'm gonna go save a new. Now I'm gonna pick a, a specific vendor here, Anderson Hardware, and I'm gonna pick an item for this one, and then I'm gonna pick here, let's say, uh, 50 items worth. That's $1,000 and 50, actually doesn't matter because we said any bill for this vendor needs to be approved. So I'm gonna click on save, and the minute I click on save, the bill approval window will prompt. I can say, please uh, approve by Friday or whatever notes I wanna add. Click on send for approval, and the same sort of thing will happen. The bill will create it. It will be uh, set up as pending approval. If I run a report of open bills, you're gonna see uh, this open bill I just created, but you're not gonna see the other one, which is this one because it's under pending approval. And again, unfortunately, I cannot go to, uh, let's say reports and open bills and say, you know what? I wanna see the ones that are pending approval, I'm gonna go to customize report and filters. There's no option here for like pending or or status, right? Like none of these things actually allow me to filter. So unfortunately, there's no filtering system in the reports. So you're kind of stuck not being able to know if these things have been approved or not. The only way you will know if they've been approved is by actually opening the bill and seeing that status right there and then. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, same thing as before, by the way, when I go to uh, track and approve transactions, that pending bill is not gonna show up here under uh, pending. I sure wish it could, only approvers would see that. So let me log out of that and log in as admin so that we can see that bill that's sort of uh, pending, uh, sitting there. And then we'll go back to that, give me a minute. Let's go back into admin 
and log in. So now I'm going to go into company, go to track and approve transactions. I should see that pending bill in there. The only one that was uh, pending from that uh, unapproved process. There it is. Uh, and then I can come in here and approve it. And I don't have to add any notes. I'll just click on approve and done. That gets done. Once I click on refresh, it should come up uh, out of pending at some point. There it is. And then it goes into approved and then it gets uh, posted. One of the little caveat, little issue I want to point out is what happens when you modify a bill that's already been approved. It's kind of a big issue. So I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to go into vendors, vendor center, and then we're going to look at Anderson's hardware tools and supply, and that's 5741.50. That's exactly how much uh, we owe to that vendor. If I go to reports and go into vendors and payables and go to vendor, balance summary, I should be able to see all the vendors I owe money to, including that Anderson hardware for 57.41.50. Okay, so we're clear. That's the total balance. Now I'm going to switch back into the that user that has uh, the, the cannot approve transactions. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and I'm going to modify the transaction that's already been approved and show you exactly what happens because this is an interesting dynamic to this whole thing and I don't necessarily know what the exact solution is but it is a little bit of a challenge if you have people modifying a bill after it's been approved so again I'm going to go to reports and I'm going to go into vendor and payables and show vendor balance summary and there it is 5741 so we're good to go there let me close the other windows here so now we know for sure that that is the pending balance that's being posted into the books at 57.4150. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up that bill, the bill for 12.50 that was here. And I'm gonna close out of this and then show you. And again, this is the bill that's already been approved. It's already been, I went through an approval process. It was approved. Let's say the user, the QuickBooks user, the non-admin user comes back and wants to add, let's say, the bill number. <clears throat> so it comes in here and adds a bill number. I'm not modifying the amount, not modifying the items, I'm just adding a number. If I click on save and I click on yes, you will notice that it stays approved because the only thing I changed was the bill number. It also happens with the memo line. However, and I'm gonna add a line here. Let me add a line, for example, for freight. And then let's say freight is um, $100, which modifies the total bill amount, but I'm gonna lower the total bill amount to just go down by that amount, making the bill, um, let me just lower this one here, making the bill the exact same net amount, but I modified something inside of it. I'm gonna click on save, and it goes back into bill approval. Now, what's interesting is, I'm gonna um, save a, a draft here. What's interesting here is, if I try to go back and fix it, I'm gonna go back and put it, back to where it was, and then I click on save. It still goes into approval mode because I've already shifted it down from approved to non-approved. So I'm gonna send this for approval, and then assuming that this was already been approved, only exception to the rule is if the items are not being touched, the, the specific items are being touched, and all you do is change the memo or the reference number, then it doesn't trigger that, um, that, that issue automatically. But I, what I do want, want to show you is that it is possible that a bill that's already been approved can be tinkered with, can be changed, it can be sent back into non-approved mode, and you can notice that the uh, accounts payable has essentially changed. And that's it. That's the feature. Um, of course, I love it, but also it's missing those extra things. Hopefully, once they release the updates, if they ever do, um, I'll do an update to the video and basically talk about all the things that it does correctly. But if you're using QuickBooks Enterprise or you're thinking about upgrading to QuickBooks Enterprise, this could be a really interesting uh, sort of feature that you can add into your workflow that allows you to protect your cash flow coming out and make sure that the correct bills are being entered and the purchase orders are being approved by the authorized individual. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.